Hi guys, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi, uh, um, Adam, can I start with, with, with you please and just uh, a question on, on making your debut. Obviously a big moment for you being included in, in, in the squad, but getting your start so early, um, your first start so early, how do you feel about that? Yeah, obviously, first off, it's a massive honour to be called into the squad. Um, gutted for Alan and Tips, they're, they're obviously two massive members of the squad and they, uh, they'll be missed thoroughly. But yeah, it's just a, a dream come true for myself. Um, it's things you obviously dream of as a, as a rugby player growing up that, that you'd obviously love to represent the British and Irish Lions and I'm lucky enough to be, to be called into the squad late and uh, get my opportunity so early on. How have you found the, the experience so far, Adam, in the last week? Yeah, to, to be honest, the first couple of days was a bit crazy to get to get a phone call late on Saturday night and then meet up with the squad the day after was was a bit mad. But um, no, the, the players, the, the staff, everyone have been very welcoming and um, I've had loads of help to get me up to speed with all, all the plays and stuff like line outs and stuff like that. So it's been it's been really good. Elliot, can I ask you how he's settling in? Yeah, he's settling well. Um, I think what's good about this squad is that everyone's here to get better. So. If anybody needs any extra help or getting up to speed and stuff, obviously we haven't got that long together. So it's all about getting getting the boys in, um, enjoying themselves. That's what, how we play our best rugby. Yeah, I was going to say, we well, were just speaking to, the, uh, to Warren actually just a moment ago. He was talking about how quick a turnaround it's been. And you probably, do you have much time to even, to even work on things between games at the moment? Um, yeah, we do, to be fair. Obviously, we've got two teams going into a week, really. So obviously some people are backing up performances from from Saturday this Wednesday but um, there's there's another team in the background sort of looking forward to the, the next game and the next Saturday so um, it, it's been good it's been testing which has been great um, but yeah it's, it's, the quality of players we've got here is is brilliant so um, you, t tell us to do one or two things different in a game we'll do it and bring it into the next week a lot Elliot has said about the, the different positions you play for, for the Lions and, and for England how do you feel about the positional change for, for this match on Wednesday for you? Yeah, I love it. Um, I love playing 13, uh, getting my hands on the ball, uh, being able to defend a little bit more, uh, make a difference there. So um, just looking to go out there and try and put my best foot forward and whatever the team needs on Wednesday, I'll, I'll, I'll do. Do you have a, a preferred position? I'm sure you've probably been asked that question about a million times before. Yeah, I reckon I've been asked it probably uh, a thousand <laughs> times at least. Um, but yeah, I, I, anywhere really. Um, for me, I'll, I want to be in the game as much as possible. So for me, 13 is, is where you get that. But anyway, I'm, I'm here to play and, and be part of this team wherever I can. So I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever uh, Warren needs me to do. Um, and just finally for me, Elliot, can I ask you, and obviously you've got your hands through with the rugby at the moment, will you get a chance to, to watch the, the football on Wednesday as well? I hope so. I don't know what time kickoff is actually, but um, yeah, we all, we all sat down and watched the sort of second half after the game on the, on the weekend. Um, I think everyone was supporting England to be fair which is good um, some of the Scottish lads sort of sitting on the fence Finn Russell sitting on the fence but I think we've convinced Hoggy to be an Englishman for a bit so um, no, it's all going well uh, hopefully we'll get another win and then we'll have a first final in a while Thanks very much Cheers guys Elliot, um, first run out for you and the team on Saturday. How was it at altitude? Uh, I know you've done a lot of preparation leading into the tour, but actually being able to um, to, to actually get out on on the pitch, how did it feel? Yeah, it was it was good. It was testing. I think um, it's difficult coming off the bench because it always when you come off the bench, it's always a hundred mile an hour anyway. So um, I don't know whether the altitude um, really was was a factor in in my sort of twenty minutes, but. You could you could tell from the lads that it does it does drain you so it's it's about having to adapt to those situations but we've been brilliant here we've uh, been training on on the watt bikes so on in altitude we've been um, sort of topping up ourselves just to make sure we're all right when we come to games and I think we showed that in the way we scored um, a lot of our points in that second half um, how we're adapting to it. We saw on social media, uh, thanks to the Lions' Twitter account, uh, a kicking drill. Uh, Maka Vunipola obviously didn't get anywhere near landing his kick, um, but yours sailed through. How have you noticed that these match balls, uh, are they flying particularly further maybe than other ones? I mean, how are they comparing? I mean, yeah, the altitude makes a difference, uh, definitely. I think um, you're able to take it sort of back five, ten metres pretty easily and then... Um, yeah, it's, it's just it's just a different way. It's not just affecting kicking, it's affecting 
uh, catching as well for the wingers and the fullbacks. Um, the ball's travelling a little bit differently. So um, it's good that we're training at altitude um, day-to-day basis just to get used to that. So when we get into games, it's not a shock. Thank you. Hi, can I get a question for Adam, please? Um, congratulations, Adam. Um, Katie from Wales Online here. Can I just ask you then, ask you to go back to the autumn then, you know, being left out of the Wales squad. At that point, would you ever have thought you'd you'd be here? And, and were you even thinking about the Lions at that point? No, absolutely not. Um, yeah, it was obviously a huge disappointment to be left out of that squad firstly, but... Look, I had some good coaches back in my club rugby just to get me back on track and just say, look, focus on your own game. And if you play well enough for club rugby, then you're in selection for international window. And like uh, PVAC and those coaches, well, they gave me a couple of work-ons to go back and work on the club. And then I was lucky enough to be picked in the Six Nations. And um, that was a pretty successful campaign for myself. And how does it feel being called up as Alan Wynne-Jones' replacement then? Have you had any advice or contact with him since you've been called up? Um, yeah, so obviously I text him as soon as the game finished, just to say obviously disappointing for him because Al's helped me a lot uh, through through the club and stuff and through country. So I was disappointed to see him go so early in, into the into the tour, like you say. Um, and and when when we travelled out, I actually saw him the day we we got to um, to Edinburgh, and um, I just said, "Oh, look, obviously disappointed for you." And he just said, "Look, you just got to take this opportunity and just." obviously lead from the front and uh, do everything you can and just do what you normally do. So, yeah, he's, he's been huge for me and he's given me a lot of advice. Great, thank you and uh, good luck. Thank you. Hi, a uh, question for Elliot, please. Um, it is Chris for Elliot. Uh, I'm just wondering about how, how you think things have progressed for you personally since you spoke about having a difficult start in the Six Nations and then you seem to sort of pretty... Um, got up to speed and confidence again going back to the club and even though you were playing in the championship how much did that all play a part in building you up to feeling uh, in top gear again? Yeah, I think it all sort of um, coincides to your form. I think obviously um, I didn't perform as well as I wanted to at the start of Six Nations towards the end. I thought I was back to where I wanted to be. Um, Obviously we didn't get the results but I think as a team and as and personally, I think my form was getting there. Um, but yeah, going back to club was brilliant. I think um, the buy-in from all all of the squad, all of the the Saracens team, really, to get us back to where we, where we wanted to be in the prem was was brilliant. And I think the nothing really changed from if we were in the Premiership to the Championship. We trained exactly the same, put ourselves under pressure, and the squad we had um, really. Uh, allowed me to sort of progress when I went back to club rather than sort of um, plateau, which you could have done. So um, no, I was, I was really, really happy with the end of the season. And, and, and just finally for me, obviously all of you playing now will be going for test places if you can. What did it mean to you to be part of it in the, that whole series last time and what are the main things you remember from that New Zealand series? Oh, it was just amazing. I think the whole experience for me... Um, I think last time I only played sort of 10, 12 games for England and came in and just wanted to train as well as possible, play as well as possible. And I was lucky enough to play in all three test matches, which was uh, brilliant. Um, uh, probably one of the highlights of my career to date. And um, I, I want to kind of replicate that again. Um, but obviously that doesn't, that's in the distance at the moment. We need to get um, as a team where we want to be um, attack wise, defense wise. So when we go into these games, whoever plays, um, we're, we're, we're ready for whatever South is going to bring. Hi Elliot, Katie here, hope you're well, congratulations. Thanks. Can I just ask a little bit then, was was there much of a chance for the squad to celebrate after the the win on Saturday and, you know, were there a few beers are they even allowed in South Africa at the moment under the rules and more generally then the entertainments committee, how, how are they doing and how, how are they keeping you occupied? Uh, yeah, well, I'm part of the entertainments committee, so we're going really, really well. Um, all the lads are loving us. Um, no, to be fair, um, yeah, it's difficult. Um, obviously, with games on Wednesday, obviously we had diff- we had new caps and we want to celebrate together. But I think we're going to have to wait for a little bit further on to to fully celebrate. But it's good to I think that the lads that got new caps, I think the whole the whole day for them was brilliant. Um, we tried to make it a, a big one for them, and I think they by the end of the day we're, we're, we're mentally and physically drained but um, I think loved it and I think um, it, it's, it's it's brilliant to try and get those boys in and get them a, a, same with Adam here to get his get his cap really early, early on the tour so he can settle in and then we can really build from there 
I think um, it's difficult, obviously, with with being in Joburg at the moment. There's we're all in lockdown where it, it, it's, we can't really go outside of the hotel bubble itself. So um, the football's really helped in that in that regard to try and get people sort of mingling off the pitch. But um, to be fair, it's, it's it's been good. It's been pretty full on since we've been here. We've had a lot of training days. Um, played a bit of golf yesterday, but yeah, at the end of the day, we're here to to win the Test series. So. Um, uh, obviously everything that goes on off the pitch is brilliant to bring us together but the more training we can do together to really combine those sort of combinations and get them in, get us into the best stead going to the test series Great, thank you, cheers Hi Elliot, it's Hugh here, hello, how are you? Good, thanks Hugh um, On the length of your, your kick you mentioned earlier on you can take it 5 or 10 metres further back I know you did a challenge recently with World Rugby. I think you got up to about 65 metres at the sea level of St Albans. Um, so uh, what, what do you reckon the maximum length it will be at, uh, of kicking in uh, in altitude? Uh, don't know yet. Obviously, we get it sort of um, practising. I think me and Hoggy are pushing pushing pretty close for each other at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's just it's, it's different. To, it, it, it does fly a lot further. You think you're a lot further out, but... The ball just keeps seems to keep going, so um, it's it's kind of making sure when you're when you're that far back that you don't really uh, try and whack it. If that makes sense, just try and back your back the distance that you've got, um, and then just get the get the strike right. If you get the strike right, it goes straight. Then it's got a chance of going over. But I think trying not to change anything. Obviously, yeah, we're looking around the 60, 60 mark, but um, we'll we'll see going in, going into the test matches. Do you feel that? Uh a weapon in your armory in terms of test selection. Do you think that's an extra thing that's going to push you forward for when it comes around to the test? Maybe, um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I think what I'm thinking about at the moment is um, my my performances in games. I think obviously in training, I just want to put my best foot forward and, and see where that takes me really. And whatever happens after that happens, but um, I'll just try and um, do, do as much as I can um, in and around training and games uh, when I get the opportunity to try and put my foot, foot forward that way. Fantastic. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank Cheers, guys.